Brian De Palma's 1981 classic thriller has long been available as a Blu-ray from Criterion, but in 2022 they issued it as a 4K UHD disc, and I finally imported a copy. My thoughts on this 4K? It's absolutely brilliant. Don't ask me how, but I'd never actually managed to see Blowout until this 4K disc. After I did the review of Brian De Palma's Carlito's Way, a few people mentioned this one to me, and so I took another look, and indeed, it really did look right on my alley. Now, it didn't do well when it was on general release in 1981, and with an estimated budget of $18 million, and only taking $12 million at the worldwide box office, clearly something had gone badly wrong. But there was also the little issue of, I think it was five reels of the original camera negative being stolen when they were being transported from New York over to Los Angeles. Now, I don't know exactly what happened there, but apparently it was being transported in the car, and when the back of that car was left unlocked in a petrol station, five boxes disappeared. And among them was the Liberty Bell Parade, which is the biggest sequence of the film. And with no negative, no sign of it, no one knowing what happened, they had to go back and reshoot great chunks of it, including that climax. So that obviously added substantially to the overall costs, but there was nothing else that could be done, had to go back and reshoot it. So maybe that $18 million budget is somewhat inflated, but clearly something did go wrong and kept people away from cinemas. There's a very nice little booklet in the case, and one of the things featured in here is a review by Pauline Kale, who clearly thought this film was top-notch, but apparently there were plenty of other reviews that were not so favourable to this film, and I can't really understand why that was, but sometimes critics do like to give a director or a group of filmmakers a good kicking after they've enjoyed much success. And Brian De Palma had this years later with Carlito's Way, when Al Pacino had just won an Oscar. De Palma had had a success the year before or two years before, and hence it was time to bring him back down to earth, and so a series of bad reviews came about. That appears to be what happened then, and it appears to also be what happened with Blowout. So it was time to give De Palma a good kicking after the year before because Dress to Kill was a massive success and just about everyone I knew at the time managed to get to the cinema to see it, even if we weren't really old enough to be doing so. My opinion is that this film has everything needed to be able to call it a great film. A terrific atmosphere, wonderful cinematography, including impressive split-focus diopter sequences and split screens like De Palma used in so many of his films. One of the most suitable music scores you'll ever hear, along with the best possible and most appropriate use of that score. Impressive lighting, suspense, mystery and likeable characters portrayed by excellent actors. If it borrows anything from other films, then I think Francis Ford Coppola's The Conversation is the one I can think of. Also, perhaps Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo was another one that was a bit of an influence, but anything else similar to Blowout, and I think it just has to be another brand of Palmer film. So nothing else quite like it that I can think of. I'm sure others will come up with some suggestions. And so, having gone on about how good I think this film is, and you're probably thinking things surely can't get any better, now I'm going to tell you how good I think this 4K disc is. For me, the image quality must capture how the original master prints would have looked. It's pristine and looks like it was shot last week with the highest quality fine grain film stock. The colour is so realistic, so natural, and that's due to HDR again. Or in this case, if your system is so equipped, Dolby Vision. But it is a dark film for much of it, and where there is deliberately low light, you will notice increased film grain and lesser definition. Compare the 4K to the Blu-ray though, and you should see things in the darkness that are not so visible on the Blu-ray. 
The opening, which appears to be a sort of homage to John Carpenter's Halloween, with Garrett Brown using his own Steadicam invention, is a little less impressive to look at than the bulk of the film, so don't set your opinion by that just because it's the first thing on screen. And then, because that opening sequence is a film within a film, we move to a screening room where the director and John Travolta's character are going through the rushes, which continues the same sort of look. Then the opening titles are inserted optically with the inevitable degradation that brings. So wait until the first hospital shots a little later on because there the set is brightly lit and you get the overall impression of how good this 4K video truly looks. The composition of every shot in this film appears to have been carefully considered and framed to perfection. The lighting provides us with the most velvety blacks with only what we're intended to be looking at visible in the frame. The camera angles are typical of a De Palma film, but it all comes together better than ever with this one. As for the sound, well, it's the original Dolby Stereo, so the About This transfer in the back of the little booklet tells us all to ensure our amplifiers are set to Dolby Pro Logic to ensure you're getting the four-track matrix surround sound. To me, it sounded just about as good as anything I've heard recently, with the possible exceptions of Jurassic World Dominion, and Top Gun Maverick, but enough about that. I don't think I want to tell you much about the plot of Blowout because I'm hoping that anyone who's like me, who had managed to avoid it all these years, is going to sit down and watch this for the first time and get as much out of it as I did. So that's enough about the plot. I might show the synopsis on the back of the case, but other than that, just take a look at it and if you feel that something isn't explained, rest assured it's all in there somewhere and you may have just missed it. So when the end credits roll, maybe think back and actually work out how we got to that ending, how it was inevitable and we inexorably traveled through to that ending. And if you can't fathom any of it out, perhaps watch the film again or drop me a message in the area below and I'll get back to you with a few pointers or a few explanations and let's see how you get on with this one. But I'm sure most people, unlike me, saw this one years ago and already know what a classic it is. So it'll be interesting to see what others think of this and if there is anyone out there who really doesn't like the film, but surely there can't be many of those. Anyway, over to you in that regard. Extras are only on the Blu-ray, which is restricted to Region A, so you may not be able to run them unless you've got an all-zone, all-region Blu-ray player or 4K Blu-ray player. There are interviews with Brian De Palma, Nancy Allen and Garrett Brown, and because the film was so good, I was fixated to everything they had to say. There is also an additional Brian De Palma film made in 1967, Murder a la Mod, but I haven't had a chance to look at that yet. No doubt being a Brian De Palma film, it would be a good one though, even if it was a few years before he really came to attention with Phantom of the Paradise. He's made some outstanding films, but I haven't seen them all yet. I do have quite a few on various formats though, so I'm getting there, and here are a few of them laid out for your delectation. The upshot is that I just feel like I've seen one of the greatest thrillers ever made, and if I'd have seen this last year when it came out on 4K, it would surely have been rivaling Get Carter for the top spot for the best package of the year, 4K package of the year. But Get Carter does have postcards, a proper book, and a poster, whereas this one doesn't even have a slipcase. So maybe a few extra embellishments on this and it would have been rivaling Get Carter for the top spot, but it would have been in that top 10 as far as I was concerned for last year. So anyone who is so interested in seeing this 4K, they want to know where I got it from. It was from Wow HD, their UK website, where when you order from there, you will see their prices do not actually have the VAT on them. And you pay the VAT when you come to the final invoice at the end of your purchases. So 20% will be added. But that should mean, and I think the reason they do this, is so that you don't get any customs charges when a week or two later, the discs arrive through your door. I'll leave a link in the description below to the WOW HD site that I use to purchase this fabulous 4K disc, and you won't be surprised to learn that this one gets a full hearty recommendation from me. But let's hope it comes out from Criterion in the UK, which will make it so much easier to get hold of. 
Now, my last review was the 1971-72 film Silent Running, Douglas Trumbull's sort of masterpiece, I suppose, and that has done it surprisingly well. But I didn't mean to mention in that review that there is another YouTuber who's put up quite an extensive review of it where he shows much more of the disc than I'm really able to show, and that's my fire video. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below, and anyone who wants to see more of that 4K of Silent Running actually running on the screen, then head over there and you'll see another calm presentation presentation. He's just had a bit of an operation, the laser surgery on his eye, so he might look a bit bloodshot in some of his more recent reviews, but he's getting over that quite quickly, and he um, seems like he can actually see properly again now, so who knows what he has in store for us in the future, so link in the description below. Apart from that, the planning for the British Film Collectors Convention on April 29th, which has fallen to me now because Keith Wilton is um, coming up to 85 years old, so I thought now we're going to do another one, I'll take the stress out of him for him, and he's going to be there as the boss, as usual, if all goes to plan. <laughs> I've been told to tell him to make sure he's got his suit and dicky bow tie on, but anyway, hopefully at the Chorley Wood Memorial Hall we'll all get together, all us film collectors, and if all goes really well, hopefully we'll have at least a video projection there, but I'm hoping 4K video projection, so we'll have 35, maybe 16, Super 8, and video projection, and hopefully 4K video projection. One of the dealers I'd lost touch with was Debonair Film, so it's great to have him back in touch. And I said I'd show his latest sales list on here, so that anyone who's into collecting in particular 16mm, then it's well worthwhile getting in touch on here and subscribing to their mailing list. It's only £7.50 a year and it will come through your door. So Debonair Films, worth subscribing to, particularly if you collect 16mm. And finally, Dennis McCulloch sent me this through the post, Standing Room Only. It's a fabulous book on Belfast cinemas by James Doherty, or Doherty it probably is, and it's actually a signed copy, which is lovely. And he just sent this through to me because he knows I love all these old cinema things. And I haven't got many books on old cinema, so this is a real treasure, and I'm going to have a lot of fun reading this, and I'm sure it's one that I'm never going to tire of. So this will have pride of place on my bookshelves in the living room, where I've got a couple of shelves dedicated to movies and cinema. So thank you so much, Dennis. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and perhaps consider subscribing. So I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content like this. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.